Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up, the home edition. I'm in the greenhouse again at home today because I'm sowing my second batch of tomatoes today. Um, now, tomatoes originate from South America where the climate is much, much warmer. And this is part of the hesitancy I've had over the previous weeks and um, people saying that they want to get going on the tomatoes and I've said, no, just wait. Now, you've got to be able to maintain an overnight temperature or a lowest temperature daily of 10 degrees for a tomato to survive and thrive. What happens is if the temperature drops to, let's say, five degrees, the temperature, it won't kill the tomato plant, but it will stall it and it'll stop it growing. And then it'll take a couple of weeks for it to get going with the same vigor that it should have had in the first place. So that couple of weeks that you lost there, you may as well have delayed the sowing, sown the seed and have it grow with all the vigor properly without any checks in it. So that's why I've been saying to you, you know, just hold off and hold back. And it, it explains that and, and hopefully people understand that. Now, as I say, they come from uh, South America, so they do need that warm temperature. And there are two types of um, tomatoes. And like most things in gardening, there are two different names for one thing. I'll explain. So you've got a determinate determined tomato and an indeterminate tomato. Now, determinate tomatoes, if it helps you to remember, they have a, a predetermined height that they grow to. And it's generally about up here, so three to four foot. Some can grow a little bit bigger, depending on the conditions, but they'll get to a certain height and they'll stop getting any bigger and they'll just contain themselves and there'll be tons of side shoots and quite a lot of fruit on it as well. Now these are perfect with the height that they get to for growing in a sheltered garden outside if you haven't got a greenhouse or a polytunnel or even a conservatory, you know, you can grow them in there. Now the indeterminates don't stop growing at all. They've got a growing tip right at the very top of the plant and that will just keep going and going and going. And I've seen in photographs online in commercial nurseries where these vines, because that's essentially what they are, they are tomato vines, can grow 40, 50, even 60 feet long and they just keep growing. As long as the conditions are optimum for that plant, they will just keep growing and growing all season. So what we say with, with those tomatoes, if you're growing them in a greenhouse or in a polytunnel, is let them get to four or five trusses and then you snip the top out to stop it growing any further. Then that plant will concentrate all its vigor into producing your fruit on the trusses below and ripening them. So you've got four or five trusses of fruit and a plant that's stopped. Right, so to recap for that, you've got a determinate to the tomato that grows to a determined size up, up to around here and an indeterminate one that keeps on growing. It's like a vine or a cordon. And that is the other name that you'll commonly see written about indeterminate tomatoes is a cordon. And the other name you'll hear for determinate tomato is a bush. It's important that you know all four of these names, even though there's only two types of tomato, simply because you might be going to order them online or look at them in a catalogue or even the back of a seed package in a garden centre or, or elsewhere. So it's important to know what you're growing so you know how to treat that plant when you've got it up to a reasonable size. Now, tomato plants are hungry. They need a lot of food, so you need good ground preferably manure or compost in there, with certainly with some fertilizer. Personally, I use, if I've got it available, I will use manure or compost or fertilizer or a combination of all three. Um, because the manure and compost in the ground will help to reserve water in the ground and, and keep it there for the plant because it does need a lot of water. I use blood fish and bone, which is a good balanced all round fertilizer, giving you all the nutrients the plant needs and that will give it all it needs for a good couple of months. And eventually you will be wanting to give it a liquid feed as well. Now, there are plenty of good commercial liquid feeds available. The one that springs to mind straight away is Tomorite. It's very popular. Everyone knows what that is. It is a tomato feed and you start feeding that as the first flowers set on the plant. So your plant will be way up, it'll be growing away, and then eventually you'll see a little yellow flower. That's the time to start feeding it because that encourages fruit development and ripening. 
there are other feeds you can you can um, you can use um, and one in particular that I use and I make myself is a comfrey I've got I've got a comfrey plant patch on my allotment and I make a liquid feed from that and that's what I feed my tomatoes with it has been proved in several tests that actually comfrey feed is far better than the commercial available feeds so you buy your comfrey plants and you grow them and then year after year you have free tomato feed and all you've got to do is cut it to the ground chop it up and put it in water and you've made your own tomato feed um, so that's what I what I do and the recommended is to feed your tomato plants once or twice a week depending on how you fix for doing it now I do things slightly different I give a much weaker solution to my plants when I feed them and I feed them every time I water I water with a watering can and I have a water butt in my polytunnel down at the allotments and that is made up as a weak feed solution and I work on it for this very reason if you imagine Christmas Day you go with, with to your families and you'll everyone has this massive dinner you know it's the best dinner of the year and then if you can imagine that for the next seven days, let's say into New Year, all you're going to pass your lips is water. You're not going to thrive very well. Do you need regular food? Well, I think a plant is no different. It does need regular food. And if it's not there in the soil, you've got to give it it. And if you're trying to encourage a plant to fruit and for the fruit to ripen, I prefer to give my tomato plants feed little and often. And I think that's far better than giving it one big dose and then starving it for three or four days. And in fact, over those three or four days, you'll be watering your plants anyway. So any feed that's in your soil, you're washing away with that water and you're leaving the plants with nothing to eat. So I give a very weak solution and it's a, a, comfrey, a comfrey feed will colour the water to the colour of a tea without milk. But when I feed my plants, the feed will... The colour of that water is just slightly off. It's just slightly brown. You barely notice it. It's that weak. But it gets it every single day of the week without fail. Now, the other thing with tomato plants is side shoots. And whether you take them off or not. Now, with your determinate tomatoes, the bush variety, the ones that grow up to here, you just leave them. Leave them on the plant and let it get on with it because... That is fairly maintenance free and you can just let the plant go go with it with a cordon variety the plant will grow up and you'll get a leaf come out of the stem and where the stem's coming up and a leaf will come out in that v in between there is where your side shoot will grow out of and if you look closely at that side shoot it is a mini me of the very top of the plant it's trying to make another plant right there in the v right next to that leaf if you grab hold of that at the base and just tip it to one side, it will come off the plant. Because you don't want them growing because that's taking vigour away from your plant. And lessening the chance of you getting a decent crop of fruit and for that fruit to ripen. Now, those side shoots, you don't need to throw them away. Just with your finger, dip a hole in your soil, pop the plant in. And it's got about a 50 to 60% chance that that will take root and you've got a free tomato plant. And it's what I do with my Crimson Crush. Excuse me one second. These are my Crimson Crush. I sowed these earlier in the season. And the reason I do that is because they fruit very early in the year. So I'm getting a very early crop from those. But at the same time, because I've sown them early, they will grow up and they'll be decent plants way before most people's plants are even in the ground. And I'll be getting side shoots off them, which I'll plant. And because they're quick to fruit, I can grow those plants on and get a second crop later in the year, towards the end of August and into September. So from one set of plants, I'm getting two sets of crops. And I'm going to sow some more in a minute, which will fill in that middle portion as well. So I've got tomatoes all summer long, fresh tomatoes all summer long, which is wonderful. But I've also got enough to make things to freeze so I can use them through through the winter and into the spring next year and even into the summer. So I can make things like chutneys and tomato sauces and ragouts, um, soups and things 
I'm still using sources now from last last year's tomato crops. We had one just two two or three nights ago, and there's enough there to see me right the way up till July. So that's my little take on tomatoes. We'll get on now, and we're going to sow. Um, well, I'm certainly going to sow this one. Maybe another one. Right. So what I've got here is two trays or tubs from my windowsill propagator in the kitchen. Now it's a, a, heat, a heated base. It's just a gentle heat. It's not. I can't set the temperature on it. It's just a gentle heat, and it's got some lids on there to keep it humid. And I'm going to sow some of these. This tomato Ildi, nice little yellow tomatoes. I like them. There's on every trush you get about anywhere between sixty and eighty fruits. It's a colossal amount. Cherry type you know size tomatoes and I'm just going to sow them on the surface of this compost this has been pre-warmed it's been these trays have been sat on the propagator bench for about oh, getting on for a week now I'm just going to make sure that they're all spread out a little bit it makes them easier when I'm coming to prick them out later so there's about 20 seeds there and that's enough of those for what I want. These I will grow in the polytunnel. The Crimson Crush will be grown outside. And I will more than likely be sowing another couple of varieties to grow in different places. But this Ildi certainly worth a try. And uh, we really like it. And this is the thing, there are so many different varieties of tomatoes and some right, right weird and wonderful names as well now i know um a friend of mine tony smith he's growing one this year called brad's atomic grape and that is would you believe a tomatoes and if you go over to his uh, channel and subscribe over there you can enter a competition where he's um a prize he's given away will be brad's atomic grape seedlings or little plants so go and have a look at that on Tony's channel and see what you think. But that's Ildi, done. So as an update, determinates are your bush type tomatoes and your indeterminates are your cordon ones, the ones that just keep growing until you chop that top part of the plants out. And they need warmth. You've got to have a minimum temperature of 10 degrees uh, day and night. These seedlings will take about a week to come up and then with me keeping them in a warm place, um, they'll be about a month or more before they're ready to go out into the ground. So you're looking at five weeks. So if you, you, can, you can roughly work out from your last frost date, and you can Google that, just last frost date, your town name, and it'll give you that. And then you can work out the ideal time to sow your seeds. So that the time that the plant is ready, that roughly five or six weeks, as long as that's past that last frost date, you should be relatively safe to pot them out. But have some fleece handy, ready to go over them in case we get a rogue frost pre uh, predicted. So there we go. And I've given you some idea about feeding as well and growing them. And as we go through the year, there'll be more detailed videos coming up and you'll be able to see how I grow them and how I manage things and, and look after things and make the structures for them and, and all those sorts of things. So do keep checking back in. And one final note, I've noticed, I've looked into the figures on YouTube and out of all the subscribers on the channel, there's only about 20% who have hit the notification bell and selected all. Now, right next to where you hit that subscribe button, that big red button, and then it turned gray, there is a little bell. If you hit that bell, select all, every time I post a video, you won't miss the content. Now, it's important that you do that because coming up, when I get to seven and a half thousand subscribers, I'm giving 50 quid away. And that will be a time limited competition. It will either be 12 or 24 hours of entry where all you have to do is just to reply to the video where I announce it. If you're not got notifications set to all, you will miss that and the competition will be over and done with by the time you come to see it and you'll have missed your chance. So hitting that bell, selecting all is so important. 
if you want the chance of doing that and if you don't want to miss any of my future content. So there we go. That's it for today. Stay safe, everyone. Look after yourselves. I've just had my first jab today. But anyway, <laughs> look after yourselves. Please stay safe and I'll see you very soon.